Hey everyone and welcome to another video on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com. Today in this video, I will explain step by step how we can use MuleSoft AnyPoint Studio and consume a RESTful web service using Mule 4. This video is part of the series of uh, step by step uh, MuleSoft tutorials that are being uploaded on Tutorialspedia YouTube channel. Before I proceed, I'll request you to please subscribe to the channel so that you are able to get latest videos from the channel as and when they are uploaded. So without further ado, uh, I have already opened uh, MuleSoft AnyPoint Studio and uh, will directly jump into the implementation part. So the scenario that I will be implementing is that I will implement a HTTP uh, listener based uh, uh, message flow where I will re uh, take the inputs from the user uh, from the client and client will uh, hit a URL and then pass some URI parameters and based on that I will call one of the publicly available uh, REST API online and the response that I will receive from that public API will be transformed into an XML format and I will do some customization in the response and then pass, pass it back to the client. So the online web service that I will be using is this one uh, HTTPS JSON placeholder dot type I code dot com slash users. So this is the API. Uh, this is the public API that we will be consuming. So let's jump into the implementation now and I will create a new project using file new and new project. And we will give some name to this uh, project uh, REST Consumer Tutorial. And uh, let's just click on the finish button as nothing else needs to be done. And uh, you will see that in just a few seconds, uh, all the dependencies will get uh, downloaded and project will get created. You can see in the package explorer we have the basic structure of the project created. Now in the message flow, we need to uh, implement overflow. So the first thing that I will do is that I will bring the HTTP listener, which will be the uh, starting point or the basic interface of our web service where user request will be landing. So for this listener under the configuration, I need to uh, set this connector configuration using this plus button. And here we need to specify the host and port where our uh, message flow will be listening. Uh, we can keep the default uh, by default it's uh, on 8081 with HTTP protocol and the host will be localhost. Since 8081 is not in use and it's available in my machine so I will just keep it as default and I will click on OK button. The next thing is that I need to specify the path. So in the path I will specify slash person slash I want to uh, get a URI parameter from the user. For that, I will use a curly bracket. And the parameter name I will give as person ID. So in this way, this HTTP listener is expecting any data from any request from the user with localhost colon 8081 slash person slash whatever is the ID, maybe one, two, three or anything. So with this basic HTTP listener configuration, the next thing that I want to do is to retrieve the person ID from the URI parameter and save it into a flow variable. For that, I will drag this set variable into my message flow and I will name the variable something like PID and for the value, I will switch into expression mode and I will write attributes dot URI params dot person ID. So in this way, person ID that will be part of the URI parameter will be saved into the flow variable with the name PID. Now the next thing, which is the key thing of this tutorial is to consume the REST web service. For that, I will drag this request component into my message flow. For this request, we need to configure it with the URL of the publicly available REST web service. So under the basic settings, configuration click on this plus button and here we need to specify the host and port and protocol as well since this this uh, publicly available online uh, rest web service is https rest web service so we will choose https and for the host let me paste it uh, we don't need to specify the complete we just specify the host name which is json placeholder.typeicode.com and 
for the port since https by default is 443 so i will specify 443 nothing else here and i'll just click on ok and now here uh, the method that we need to uh, use so this is a get method so we will choose default get and for the path we need to write the expression because i want to concatenate slash users slash whatever will be the id so for that i will concatenate the variable which i have already created wars.pid so in this way whenever the whenever a user will call the service and pass uh, use uh, pass an id person id that will be concatenated to the uh, this url when consuming the rest web service so with this we have created a very basic type of structure for our message flow and even if we consume this now we should receive a response and uh, as i explained before uh, we will do the transformation of the response but before we do the transformation of the response from json to xml and to some custom elements let's run this uh, uh, message flow and run this project to make sure that everything is working fine so click on this run project we save everything and it will take some uh, minutes maybe a few seconds or a couple of minutes uh, before the project gets deployed and let's move to the browser and the, right type the url that we will be calling http localhost colon 8081 slash person slash one so i will get the result in the json format for the person one but i need to wait for the status to be changed to deployed in the console so you can see it's still deploying and depending on the specifications of your machine uh, it takes less or more time so now you can see for my machine also which is not very good machine still it's now deployed so now let's go to the uh, browser and hit the url mm, it should return me a response uh, it's taking a bit longer but yeah we got the response because it was invoking public uh, web service available online so we got the response in the json format so if we change the parameter from one to two we should get the response for the second user so in this way we are able to get the responses from the public api and this is how we can consume rest web service now let's uh, extend this uh, message flow to add some more features so the next thing I want to do is that I want to transform the response into an XML format of my own choice. So I will choose this transform message and drag it into the message flow. And for this transform message, I need to define the metadata as well. So let's click on this define metadata. And now we will click on this plus button. So name it like uh, response metadata, anything you can name it and create type. This is going to be uh, because the response that we receive from the public uh, public API is in JSON format. So we will choose JSON. And here we can either specify a schema or an example JSON. So I have an example. So I will choose example. And uh, uh, the example that I want to utilize is the one that I got in the response. So I copy it and I paste it into a simple JSON. So this is the sample JSON and save this file. And now we will specify this file using this browse option. So I will choose this sample JSON. And you will see that based on the elements that were available in the sample JSON, the structure has been created. So we will just click on select. Now it's resolving the metadata and you will see that under this output, all of these elements will be available. So these elements now we can specify here. So in order to transform the response, the first thing I want to do here is uh, the type of output application slash XML because the final output that I want to pass to the client is in the form of an XML. So here I will specify a few of the elements from the output. <clears throat> so instead of passing all the JSON elements, I, I want to pass only ID or let's make it as a person id and pass the value payload.id and the second thing that i want to do is <clears throat> i want to pass 
person name and name it like payload dot name and the third thing i want okay for now let's keep only two things but another important thing this is xml so i need to specify the root element so let's name the root element as person <clears throat> so there is something wrong in this person element the way I'm specifying it okay so now it's correct so since the project was already loaded so we can now try it so let's go back to the browser localhost 8081 slash person slash 2 and if we hit the service we receive the response in xml format of our own custom uh, transformation so we receive person with a person id and person name so this is how we can transform the response from the actual response that we are receiving from a public api this is a simple transformation you can do more things here even you can pass uh, other elements from output of some other uh, flow uh, elements depending on your requirement so that's it for this video i hope it was a helpful tutorial for you feel free to comment below and uh, i'll be more than happy to respond to your queries and if you have any other sub uh, topics that uh, you want uh, to be clarified for which you want videos uh, uh, do um, mention in the comments thank you very much and don't subscribe don't forget to subscribe to the channel bye bye for now